Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Not Too Late, the only late night show that has an undefeated record in cornhole. We have a great show for you tonight, Rob Shirell from Hell LA this year, but before we get to him, let's check out what's happened in the, news, in the news this week. New York Jets running back Isaiah Crowell was fined nearly $14,000 by the NFL for a touchdown celebration in which he rubbed the football on his butt. Though many found Crowell's actions reprehensible, the student helped, or the student helped the running back lend an endorsement deal with the company, Dude Wipes. Though the small company had received little exposure before this story, I don't think they'll have any problem selling products moving forward. And I can't think of a more perfect marriage than the new one formed between Dude Wipes and the NFL. <laughs> a Louisiana man claimed that it was a ghost who put the meth on his nightstand when questioned by authorities after the man called to report that a ghost had attacked him. Both were promptly arrested on the charge of possession. <laughs> Last week, Bloomington finally celebrated Indigenous Peoples Day. Native American students and community members alike flooded Dunn Meadow for a wide array of speeches for the event. This gathering was much bigger than Fiji's Halloween party last year that featured 25 different white girls dressed up as Pocahontas. <laughs> India's airport police have been instructed to smile less. Their security agency believes excessive friendliness puts airports at a risk of terror attacks. Officials want, to, want police to be more vigilant than friendly. If they really want tips on how to be less friendly, I suggest they talk to my freaking in-laws. Ah, not even married. While in the set of Ballad of Buster Scruggs, Liam Neeson reunited with a horse that says, that he says, remembered him from their work together on a previous movie. Sarah Jessica Parker said she was deeply offended that Liam Neeson didn't recognize her. <laughs> Last week, Lindsay Lohan went live on Instagram and attempted to convince a homeless family of what she believed to be Syrian refugees to let their kids go with her. The family was clearly uncomfortable with Lohan's advances and they began to try and flee from her. Lohan then accused the mother of being a human trafficker and gave chase. The interaction ended with Lohan being punched, in the, punched by the mother as the children fled. Talk about a freaky Friday. <laughs> <laughs> That's all we have in the news for this week, but before we get to our interview, we sent some members of our field team out for a shoot at Hoosier Hysteria where they got to know the people waiting in line a little better. Let's check it out. Hey guys, this is Shannon from Not Too Late. We're here at Hoosier Hysteria where Hoosier fans have been lined up for hours waiting to catch a sneak peek of this year's basketball team. So I thought it would be a perfect time to figure out some of my deep emotional trauma. Let's go! Romeo Langford. Perfect. One out of one. One out of one. Romeo. Perfect. Perfect. Second question. Who is this? My kids. This is actually Archie Miller. Um, they got a new coach last year. Um, I don't know if you know that. Um, That's Mike Vince, but he's not an IU basketball player. Um, I, this is actually the head coach, uh, Archie Miller. Um, I don't know if you guys know, but they got a new coach last year. That's 1,000% Mike That Vince. is I not a Archie million Miller. percent. Sure, no, but you have okay. That one, wrong. One, out, one out of two, one out of two is fine. It's fine. This is actually Archie Miller. Um, we got a new coach this year. I don't know if you've seen him uh, this year or last year, but uh, he looks a lot angrier. Is it a joke? <laughs> this is IU. It's nothing. It's no, that's, nothing's that's a joke. That's my that's, we'll just move. We'll move on to the next one. Who's this? Victor Oladipo. Perfect. Who's this? Victor Oladipo. Perfect. Three for three. Okay. Two for three. <laughs> but it's fine. Um, who's this? I think. I can help you guys out. Um, this is actually my ex-boyfriend. Um, I hope you're watching. Um, he cheated on me three times. I hope you're watching this. Justin Smith. Um, this is actually my ex-boyfriend. Um, I hope you're watching this. <laughs> this is actually my ex-boyfriend. Um, I hope you're watching this. He uh, cheated on me a couple times. Not worried about him. He uh, cheated on me a couple times, but I'm not worried about it. I'm not worried about you. Well, we got some trivia for you. Okay, second round is trivia. What year did the Indiana Hoosiers finish with a perfect season? 1976, 1983, or March 24, 2017? The day I left and the day you broke my heart. 1976. 1976. It's, it's fine. Which one of these Hoosiers did not grace a cover of Sports Illustrated while they were playing at IU? Greg Graham, Damon Bailey, or Calvert Greg Graham. Greg Graham? Final answer? Um, it's actually Calvert Chief. 
I actually scored 12 points on him in the pickup game. Did you play for IU basketball? No. I got cut from the fifth grade team and never played for organized basketball. Wow. Is there anything you want to say to your fifth grade coach right now? I did it, coach. I did it. Go <laughs> <Cool. Calvert. laughs> Speed round. Um, three reasons why you think I'm single. Uh, I'm, surprised that, I'm surprised that you are, and you seem like a very nice person, and you have a lot of energy, and you're very knowledgeable about how you support, so just keep looking, I'm sure you'll have a lot of success Thank you. <laughs> Alright, well there you have it. I can't actually afford therapy, so this is what I have to do. I'll see you next week. Back to Tommy. Welcome back to our show. We're here with Rob Shirell, host of IUS TV's last late night show, Hello Late. Welcome, Rob. Hello, How's hello. Thank you guys. It is awesome to be back. Super weird. I don't know anything anymore. I don't know. <laughs> I got lost on the way to the studio, and I used to tape the show here every, every single week. So what have you been up to uh, since you left IU? I know you're out in LA, how's that? Uh, it's great, man. I've been, I've been doing a lot of like, cool stuff, like uh, struggling to pay for rent, mm -hmm. and <laughs> Uh, you know, begging for money from my parents. Um, but besides the, you know, besides the real life things, I've been doing a lot. A lot. Um, I've been doing a lot of writing and stuff for like TV and stuff. I've been able to work with like Comedy Central on some stuff mm -hmm. and his MTV on some stuff. Um, you know, just you know, living the dream, I guess. All right. So if I'm not mistaken, you got your major. You did a build your own major in stand up comedy, right? Yeah. Build your own major. W yeah. The best and worst decision of my life. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, so how is that helping you in your post college life? Like, I, uh, it's not. Um, well, it's, it's not because <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you guys do you guys know how hard it is to apply for a real person job when your resume says you majored in stand up comedy? I don't I'll know. tell you hard, <laughs> very hard. Yeah, I can imagine. So uh, what what brought you to make that choice? What what pushed you to do that? Oh, man. Uh, it was so long ago, I feel like. Um, I had been doing stand-up like, uh, for a long time at that point, and when I originally came to IU, I majored in uh, political science and law and policy because I was on a pre-law track. I wanted to go to uh, law school, and mm -hmm. as corny as it sounds, I wanted to be president of the United States. That was like my goal mm -hmm. all throughout my life. And then I, uh, s around sophomore year, I started to do, do like bigger shows, and I was like, man, I would really love to perform and do comedy professionally, but I can't drop out because I have lots of loans, incredible amount of loans, mm -hmm. and my mom would murder me. So I had to find a way to merge both my passion, which, you know, for the art of comedy, with, uh, with college itself. And so I was like, man, how can I do that? So I started to look into some resources, and uh, the College of Arts and Sciences has a program called the Individualized Major Program, where you can design your own curriculum. And uh, I was like, hey guys, what about stand-up? Would mm -hmm. that, that work? Originally, they were like, no, you're, you're freaking crazy. <laughs> but they're like, okay, well, we'll give it a shot. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it's the, the, the downside was like, you know, you can't really get a real person job, but that was the breaking point for everything for me. Like, I would not be able to have done so many cool things like in my career so far without starting, you know, here at IU, so. Mm -hmm. Definitely, yeah. so you went from pre-law to stand-up. Mm -hmm. Interesting shift, mm -hmm. I like it. My, my family was so pleased. <laughs> yeah, I bet. They were, they um, loved it. So you had a big focus on music on your show, and mm -hmm. you brought in artists like uh, Huckleberry Funk, yep. and then uh, I know you brought, also brought in Point Dexter the Great. Yep. And so uh, you had some really good interviews with them, and I was just curious, uh, what kind of music do you listen to these days? Uh, I, uh, I don't listen to any Kanye I'm anymore. Guys, he's, I'm coming. He's I'm coming, guys, I'm coming. Uh, Did I miss it? There. Rob, he's still here. Yes, yes, yes. What is this? Am I oh being my. punked? Rob, oh my God, Rob. I have been a huge fan ever since the Hello Late days, Rob. Oh my God, can you please sign my notebook, Rob? Please, Rob, sign my is notebook. Is this a thing? Is this, is this a can random you, person from the street? What's happening? Can you please sign my notebook, Rob? Yeah, I don't know Thank you so much. Is. Oh my God, this is so amazing tighter security. What the? Oh my God. They don't pay us for security. That is go. I'll sign it, Rob, just joking. Oh my God, thank you. Rob, can you sign my hat too? My hat too, Rob, please. Okay, I'll do, I'll do that. You oh sure? My. Yes, I'm sure. Nice hat. Rob, I want you to sign it, please. Do you please, want one for me? Oh, okay. Mm, maybe, la maybe after the show, maybe after the show. Maybe after the show, Thanks. all right, thank I appreciate that. And the shirt too, Rob. Rob, I brought all this stuff for you to sign. I really, oh, my I'm a huge fan, Rob, please. All right, okay. On the back, right here. Uh, okay. Can you write like to my friend or my buddy? Okay. To my buddy. To <laughs> it's happening, guys. My <laughs> buddy. Thanks. Mm -hmm. My Thanks Rob, guys. <laughs> so for <amazing>. interrupting <laughs> the show. Yes. Man, 
Thank you. This is terrible handwriting. You have a very sweaty back. This all right, all right. <laughs> I'll try to stretch it out. I'll try to stretch it out. Yeah. Rob, just joking. Ooh, you Boom. Yes. Twitter handle. I like it. Yes. Follow me. Oh yeah, I'm definitely. Or gonna... you have to burn. Oh the wait, shirt. one more, one more thing, one more thing. I, I always carry this picture of you around, Rob, because oh, I, I please, always want to see. Oh please, God, please, this is a picture of me. Rob, I'm gonna please. see. <laughs> I've always wanted Rob to sign this. I've always wanted Rob to sign this. This is my favorite picture. I want to hang it up on oh, the wall. Oh man, no, here. this is a collage of my face. This is the creepiest thing Come I've on, ever guys, seen. Check this That's out. a pretty good picture. <laughs> some love, Look. some love for Rob, guys. That's gonna be homemade. Some love for Rob. Oh man. Sign it for me, yeah, Rob. Yeah, Thank you so much. Why are you having him sign a black and white picture? Guys, in with, with a black, black marker, marker, yeah. <laughs> I think he's trying to stay on brand I'm with so the skin color. I appreciate it. I'm just. Joking. Oh my God, Rob! This there you is, go, man. I can't believe it. One last thing, Rob. Can we take oh a God, picture? Please don't make me sign your ass. Can we take uh. a picture before I leave, Rob? Can we take a few pictures? Okay, yeah, sure. Oh my God, I'm so nervous. Just a quick selfie. You want quick me to selfie. be in it? No, no, no. You're good. Okay, let's sit down. <laughs> oh. Let's sit down. Awesome. Me and Rob, baby. Woo! His oh, hands man. are shaking. Yeah. Can you is. take a quick picture of me and Rob? Yeah. Thank you so much. At the camera, Rob. Woo! Hello. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much, Rob. There you it was, go. It was so great to meet you, Rob. Thank you so much. Oh my God. I've always wanted to re meet like a real life comedian, writer, filmmaker, and like former late night show host. It's oh. Oh, so just amazing. Former one? Yeah, just like yeah. former one. All the stuff you've accomplished, it's like sorry. It's amazing. Right. It honestly really inspires me. Well, thank you, stranger. And also, by the way, the last rap cipher, the episode in your finale, Damn, those bars were hot, kid. Hot bars. I love that. Hot bars. No one likes hot bars. All right, stay for love the show. Love you, Rob. No? All right. Lock that door. Yeah, Someone lock definitely that door. Need to close Please that. lock that door. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Uh, uh, that was weird. Anyway. Yep. <laughs> uh, so I saw that Hell Latest on IMDb. How did, yeah, you, how yeah. did you swing that? Um, I sold my soul to the Illuminati. Uh, you know, I, I, it, was, it was cheap. I, you know, they gave me a deal. Mm -hmm. um, but no, I, I just like submitted it to IMDb. Oh, you can just submit it. Yeah, that's really if you, cool. If you if you know, it's like a it's what is it? It's like a industry like secret, I guess. Mm -hmm. But you can submit anything to IMDb as long as you submit it the right way, using the right words, the right type of web pages, mm -hmm. the right media clippings. Yeah. Uh, you have to do it everything very specifically, or they'll deny it. But mm -hmm. like, thankfully, I was I I I was like, how do I do this? I was typing <laughs> it up, and they're like, no, like. This is not going to work. So I just wrong. went back and redid it, and they, mm -hmm. they put it on there. And and all of the cast and crew got IMDb credits from that. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right. So uh, one thing that I'd say you're pretty known for, especially with Hell Late, is your hats. Oh, uh, man. I, you I'm surprised you didn't bring yo, a hat in today. Yo, you uh, know, it, it's, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. I had a hat Easter egg, like, on every episode. If you mm -hmm. watch it, and I don't, think, I don't think anyone picked it up because I don't know why anyone would pick it up, but if you watch the show back, Every hat that I had on my desk was the hat I wore in the next episode. Seriously? Yeah, every like I know you always had a hat on the desk. So how many hats would you say you own? Do you Ooh. still own all those? Yeah, yeah. I got a I got a collection of fedoras. Uh -huh. Yeah, like a like a like a like a weirdo. I'm a, I'm a total creep. Do you have any estimate on how many you got? Uh, eight. I got eight hats got eight in varying colors and styles. They're my children. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so as a veteran performer at the Comedy Attic, oh. which is a legendary stand-up club in Bloomington, what mm -hmm. advice uh, would you want to give any aspiring comics or anything like that? Uh, you know, first, I, I want to say that I'm not a, a veteran performer at the, the Comedy Attic. There are people there who have been performing there for years who I would consider like veterans. Like, mm -hmm. you know, like David Britton was on the, the finale. Like David's incredibly funny. And, it, you know, Bloomington's given some, you know, some great uh, stand-up talent. But... Um, I would say if you need some advice, like go talk to Jared. Jared is like the owner. He's really grumpy all the time and mean and mean and grumpy. But <laughs> besides that, he's a great guy. He'll mm -hmm. give you the advice if you can if you can dig past the, the rough exterior to his soul. Mm -hmm. <laughs> awesome. All right. So do you have any crazy stories or like memories so far from your career since you've left Bloomington? <sighs> Man. Dude, I don't know if this is a, I don't know if these stories are appropriate. We can bleep it out. All right, you can bleep, just bleep the whole thing. It's like bleep. if we have to. <laughs> um, crazy stories. So okay, so right after I left IU, I went to Thailand to uh, to write a documentary film for the Mayfall Long Foundation, mm -hmm. and me and Corbin Clark. If you might know Corbin Clark, he still goes here. Corbin Clark? No. Okay, he's. Not doing nope. his job well. Um, <laughs> Corbin, uh, Cor Corbin was the yeah. Corbin was the DP on. Somebody gets it back there. Somebody stalks him. Um, Corbin was the DP for the film, and me and Corbin went out to Thailand. We worked with the foundation. Like it's a whole spiel about like the project that we did, but it was a great experience. But we needed work visas to stay in Thailand as long as we wanted to, mm -hmm. or as long as we needed to. So the Mayfa Long Foundation sent us to the neighboring country to, of Laos, which is right next to Thailand, mm -hmm. to get um, to get our work visas situated. 
we almost got stranded in Laos because what the Mayfong Long Foundation did not tell us was that you had to pay a uh, entry fee just to go into the country. I forgot mm -hmm. what it's called, but it's like a on arrival type of visa just to be there. Mm -hmm. And it cost us all of the money that we had were, that we were gonna give to the embassy for our visas. Mm -hmm. So when we got there, we were flat broke. We didn't have the money to get our visas. Mm -hmm. we, we were like, how were we gonna make this work? Like we, and, 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 mm -hmm. totally different <laughs> currency. They don't like, <laughs> Thai, Thai operates in bot. Mm -hmm. which is like a really funny word for money. But mm -hmm. then you got to realize there's a currency called dong out there. there <laughs> look it up. It's real. <laughs> but um, w we had no bot left. And then we realized that Laos had a different currency itself. They operate in kip. Mm -hmm. Kip. Like that's a money. <laughs> kip, they operated in kip. And so we, had, we couldn't get around. We took like these like tuk-tuks, which are like the, the, the taxi cab things around. And we get to the embassy and we're the Mayfall Long Foundation set mm -hmm. us up with uh, a conne uh, with a contact there, his name was Mr. Mongo. I'll never forget it. Mr. Mongo was our contact uh, mm -hmm. at the embassy there. But when we get there, everyone tells us that there is no such thing as Mr. Mongo. They're like, <laughs> we're like, hey, we're supposed to be here for the Mayfall Long Foundation to get our work visas to in Thailand. We're here to talk to Mr. Mongo. Mm -hmm. They were like, there is no Mr. Mongo. Never heard of him. Like, yeah, he doesn't exist. And we're like, is, <laughs> are we in a freaking movie? Like, what is going on? <laughs> And so, we're, like, we're trying to explain to them, not only we have to meet with Mr. Mongo, mm -hmm. we have no money for our visas, so we still don't know how we're going to pay for that. It's after literally an hour and a half of asking people, hey, are you Mr. Mongo? Are you Mr. Mongo? Does anyone know who Mr. Mongo is? Everyone's ignoring us, pretending like they don't speak English, which, of course, that means they didn't, but mm -hmm. they could have been <laughs> friendlier about it. And finally, because I kept asking, someone walks out of the, uh, of the building, I'm like, hey, do you, are you Mr. Mongo? Do you know where, like, where does he work at? Oh, they were like, oh, yeah, he works in that building right there next, like, like, right next door to us. And I was like, I, I've, been, I've been asking everyone here, and mm -hmm. the, you, everyone has told us that he does not exist. And you're like, oh, yeah, he's right there. He's right, he's like, he's, look, you can see him. He's right, <laughs> he's like right across the way. Mm -hmm. And so we go to Mr. Mongo, tell him what happened, and then uh, he's like, I'm so sorry about that, guys. I'll take all the money for your visas. I'll get you guys settled, and you can catch your flight back home. Um, they were like, oh, yeah, funny story. We also have no money anymore. And he's like, oh. And it was like, what are you guys going to do? It was like, we were hoping you could help us. And he was like, like I don't know. I don't know what to do. He's like, you're both <laughs> strange Americans. I don't know you guys. And so what ended up happening was we, so when you get a visa, they take your passport and they have to like put a, like a form on it and, mm -hmm. or something. And uh, they take it. So he took our passports, put the visas on there, and we're like, well, if you give me the money, I can give you your passports back. And we're like, how are we going to get home without our passports? And they were like, well, we can't give it back to you because the visa's in it now. I'm like, why did you put it in there without <laughs> us without paying for it? Yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. So um, this, is, yeah, this is a long story, if you couldn't tell. Long story, <laughs> because it, it was a very long day, and it was hot. Hot. Do you know how much sun like, absorbs into this black skin? No, so I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so much. Um, so we left the embassy. We're like, what's going on? We try to go to the ATM to get, um, we try to go to an ATM to get more money out, but then Corbin's debit card wasn't working like, uh, at all for whatever reason. He had no, like it just, the, no, no ATM was giving us money out. And my debit card was actually stolen in a strip club in Bangkok six <laughs> weeks prior. So I didn't have my debit card either. <laughs> yeah. That's a, that's, that's also true. Um, six weeks prior, debit card gone. So we have no money, no way of getting it. Corbin calls his dad. He's like, Hey, can you wire me some money? He tries to wire it. The money somehow never like doesn't go through out of his dad's account. It's gone, but it never came through on mm -hmm. our end. And we're like, Oh my God, our phones are dying. The like night is approaching. Wolves are coming out. It's, it's so crazy. <laughs> and, uh, we were like, yo, we have no money, we have no food, we don't have our passports, we can't stay in any hotel. Like, we missed our flight already to get back to Thailand, how are we gonna get out of this? And, you know, what people, a lot of people don't know is, like, I, I like, was homeless for a while, um, like, growing up and stuff, like, mm -hmm. but even while I was in college, I was going through a lot of stuff, um, you know, teardrop. But, uh, I was like, here's what you do, here's what we do. We go to sleep in the most public, safe area we can find, which usually, if, if you have any experience of homelessness, is like parks. Mm -hmm. So I was like, we gotta find, a park to sleep in that's the best bet for us but the thing is we have 
thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars worth of the Mae Falong's camera equipment with us. Mm -hmm. And we're like, yo, we are gonna get so robbed. <laughs> we are gonna get so robbed in this park. And we go to the park, we're hanging out, we're eating our dinner for the night, which was literally the food that we had stolen from the airport. <laughs> like the plain snacks or whatever. We're eating uh -huh. our dinner on a park bench in the middle of Laos. It's totally dark outside. We don't speak the language at all. And we're like, oh, this is how we die. Mm -hmm. This is how we. This is how we die. We get murdered on in a random country. Mm -hmm. Stomach full of airplane snacks. Yeah, <laughs> worst way to go out. Worst yeah. way to go out. Stuff will back you up. Um, so, we were saved by a random Laotian girl who was jogging in a park, who noticed that we were Americans because uh, she studied English in America. So when she saw us, she offered to help us. Mm -hmm. She was like, "I noticed you guys. You look very out of place. Is there something wrong?" And we told them this, told her the story. She she got us a hotel room. She got us food. She like um, she took us to this place where we can get like money the next morning, mm -hmm. like off of Cor Corbin's debit card. And like she saved our lives. And we got our visa the next day and flew back to flew back to Thailand. It was it was so strange. And you know what's funny? Mm -hmm. She said she had always wanted to jog in that park. She just chose that night to to do it. That's crazy. Uh, you still That's keep up contact with her? Do you get any way to contact her? Yeah, her name her? is Vicky. She, her name is Vicky. Uh, we're we're <laughs> friends on we're like yeah, we're friends on Facebook. She mm -hmm. like helped me out of a great jam, and, and somehow Vicky knows people that I know now in L.A., which is weird. Like that's crazy. Yeah, she and it was it was a crazy story. Mm -hmm. uh, long long story finally shortened. Um, we got back to Thailand. Uh, we got our visas. Everything worked out. The Mayfall Long Foundation was pissed. Pissed. We thought they were going to send us home after that. We were mm -hmm. like. Well, well, the documentary's done. We're never going to finish making it, but <laughs> yeah, didn't die. Round of applause for not dying. Yeah. For not dying. All right, we're going to throw to a, uh, we're going to throw to a little break, but when we come back, we're going to see which one of us is truly the best interviewer. We'll see you Ooh. soon. Ooh, I like it. <laughs> Ooh. Welcome back, everyone. It's time for the interview Olympics. We're going to bring out a guest that neither Rob nor I have ever met. Round one is going to be some basic introductions, so we'll bring him up and uh, we'll bring him up. We'll both introduce ourselves to him. Uh, we'll play this almost as if you're uh, running hella late, so we'll bring oh. somebody up from the audience. Oh, okay. Round two is going to be some uh, interview questions. We each get to pick three questions we want to ask, and then he'll tell us who he likes better. Oh. And then uh, round three has a little bit of a twist. So let's see who we're going to bring up. You in the front row, glasses. Me? Yes. Yes, you random stranger. Okay. You, <laughs> with the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Already <laughs> attached. All right. All right. Hi. Hi. I'm Tucker Scanlon. Nice to meet you, Tucker. I'm it's Nate. Nice to meet you, Nate. I appreciate having you here, and you mean the world to me. Well, thank you very much, Tucker. Top that. Hi, my name is Rob Sherrill. Nice to meet What's you, What's your Rob? name? I'm Nate. What's your dreams, Nate? <sighs> well, I've always wanted to be a lumberjack. Mm. You can do anything you set your mind to. Those glasses makes you the man. Thank you very much, Rob. Yeah, suck it. Suck oh, it. <laughs> suck it, Tucker. All right, so who, did, who won round one? Who's a better introduction? It was really close, but I'm going to have to give it to Rob. Uh, all right, it's all right. You got to start behind to get a comeback. All right, <laughs> game two. We each get to interview him. You okay. get three questions, I get three questions. You all can right. go first. Um, what is your major? Um, I'm a cinema major, okay. so I'm here for like my 223 class. What, what, is your, what is your goal by the time you leave here? Um, I don't really know. I guess maybe make movies. That'd be pretty cool. Okay. Well. That's, I agree. That is really Hey, cool. hey, no, no interrupting. I'm just, I'm cheating, cheating. <laughs> um, okay, so you're a cinema major. You'd like to make movies. If there is any movie that you could go back in time and remake, what would you make? And how would you do it? Um, it'd probably be a movie like Howard the Duck and just make sure it never existed. <laughs> just go back and yeah, unmake it? Yeah, just, just pretend it never existed. That or like... I mean, that's if, what we do now. It's like, if they made like a fourth uh, Indiana Jones movie, if they made one of those, mm -hmm. like if they go did back, that. Yeah. Uh, if, if they did that. If, if they, they, they totally would, didn't, right? Yeah, no. Why would, why would they do that? That would be terrible. Oh, man, we live in a terrible time. All right, so now it's my turn. Uh, I've never met this guy before. You said your name was Nate, right? Yeah. I have some Nate notes, <laughs> what, just in no, case I run into anybody named Nate. <laughs> All right. Thankfully. Uh, let's see. How's Marlo doing? 
Uh, my mom's doing well. Good what to hear. <laughs> yeah, my mom's doing well. Uh, she's she's gonna run the uh, Tokyo Marathon hopefully in I want to say April. That's awesome. Tell so. her I said hi. I will. All right. Uh, so, <laughs> looking back uh, through some of your old pictures, I physical copies, of course. Uh, I see that your 11th birthday party was cars themed. Uh, do you remember that part when Lightning McQueen goes ka-chow? You remember that? That's that's definitely my favorite part of the movie. That's a good part. By far. Oh, this is some bull. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, so my last question. Are you, still, are you still allergic to kiwis? I have that down in my notes with your permanent medical records. Uh, are you allergic still? So um, it's actually related to my latex allergy, so yes. Interesting. Um, if I eat it, my throat will start closing mm -hmm. up and it'll get really dry, so that's not really good. I'm trying to avoid that. I said your glasses were nice. He did. <laughs> so who won round two, Nate? You know, it was just such a nice personal touch that I'm going to have to give it to Tucker. Unfortunate for you, Rob. This is racism. I just want to point this out that this is racism <laughs> at its All right. finest. So now <laughs> we have our surprise twist. Could we get somebody out here to put on some noise-canceling headphones for Nate? So Rob can be informed of this twist. What is going on? I'm never doing this again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Once you get those headphones on, we'll make sure that it is good and noise-canceled. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? All right, I'm gonna level with you, Rob. This dude has a month to live. A good interviewer can tell somebody any information they need. All right, Nate, buddy, take the headphones no, off. What? I, All right, Rob, you go first. We have some big news for you, buddy. What? <laughs> so, um, there comes a time in every no, I can't do it start that way. Um, <laughs> when you really love someone, you no. <laughs> it's not, I can't do it that way. You are going to die very soon. What? What? All right, my <laughs> turn. Hey, uh, can you count to 30? Yeah. That's how many days you got. ka -chow! <laughs> Bam! You said that was your favorite line. Brought it back. <laughs> Who told you better? What? <laughs> right. uh, because I had a callback, I'm going to say that I won that, but congratulations, Rob. You get a lovely Constellation prize of an old, broken MacBook keyboard. I'm going to oh. die? Woo! Hey, thank you for coming up. Why don't you get off the stage? We Thanks, man. We don't here anymore. Hop on down. All right. Uh, thank you all for coming out to the show. Uh, special to thanks him. to our guest, uh, Rob Shiro. We really appreciate Woo! you coming thanks out. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. Uh, check out all of his social media. If you'd like to shell out really quick, let everybody know what you got going on. Uh, yeah, uh, my name is Rob Shirell. Follow me on Twitter at Rob Just Joking, please. It's how I self-validate myself. Um, if I, a, I actually just got a promotion today at my job. Woo! Do you guys know what Happy Place is? Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Do you guys know what Happy Place is? No. It's a, like an art, it's a pop-up art museum installation. It, it, it's touring around the, the world right now. And I started off with them and that when I got to LA as a production assistant and I got promoted yesterday, no actually today, uh, to general manager. So Congratulations. running the production. We're gonna be in Toronto from November 1st to January 1st. Come through, tickets on me if you guys uh, wanna come. Like, so it's really popular with social me media influencers and celebrities, they all come through and take photos. Tickets on me, come through. Uh, that's all I'm, I'm gonna plug for right now. Awesome, that's great. <laughs> all right. Uh, come back next week to see me play some Plinko with Jesse Eisenberg. I'll see you next time. Why and don't forget, it? it's not too back? late to take bowling lessons. See you later. Thank you for watching another great episode of Not Too Late. If you want to see a past episode, click right here. If you want to subscribe, click here. If you want to check out our Twitter, click here. If you'd like to illegally download Transformers 2 Dark of the Moon, that's right here. Uh, if you'd like to see if you could save money by switching to Geico, uh, that'll be below the video. Um, if you want to invest in Bitcoin for any reason, click right above my head. <laughs>